folks, it's Josh Stoney Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much for the support here on the channel. Today we're going to be working with cast iron skillets and cast iron pots and hold on. And this cast iron thing, I don't know. I think you use it for cooking bacon. I don't know. I've had it for like five years and it's crusty, it's old, it's gross. We're going to show you how to restore these pans, these old pans like this that you just don't use because you just can't use it. It's all sticky and icky. We're also going to show you how to restore an old rusty crusty one, okay? So this is a pretty cool old school rusty crusty cast iron pot. And we're going to show you what to do to season your brand new Lodge brand cast iron skillet. Now I already have one well seasoned cast iron skillet. I've had this skillet for 10 plus years and what we're trying to get away from is this non-stick coatings on our pan. No matter what, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, you're going to be ingesting this material from your pan. We don't want to eat this. We want to convert ourselves over to using cast iron only for all of our cooking here on the Stony Ridge Farm. So come along on the show today and I'll teach you how to season your brand new cast iron skillet. I'll show you how to repair your old crusty, rusty, nasty cast iron pots. And I'll also show you how to get rid of the sticky, the sticky icky on one that you might not use that might already be in your cabinet so we can stop using these. And I'll also give you a little lesson on how to appropriately clean. I left it dirty on purpose to show you. So come on along, we'll have some fun today. All right? Woo! So the first thing I'm gonna show you is this crusty skillet. So this is my well-seasoned cast iron skillet. I love it, I cook almost everything in it. I'll show you the appropriate way to clean this. Soap is the enemy. Once your pan is seasoned, never ever use soap. I'll show you exactly what we use to clean it. All these products will be linked down below in the video description in case you wanna purchase your own pans and your own cleaning tools so that you can get a good start with your cast iron. I'm gonna run a little bit of warm water in there, just enough to fill the bottom of the pan. Then we're going to take this pan and put it on the stove. Now, we bring our pan over to the stove and we turn it on to a medium high heat. Now the simple process behind this is all we're going to do is heat that water up in that pan and clean it without soap, without water. And what we're going to use is just a simple brush. Now you can pick up a brush like this or you can pick up the Lodge brand brush which I'll post a link to down below. Now you wanna heat this up until it's just starting to steam. If there's crusties all around the upper edge here, then you may wanna put a pot lid on there and let it steam. But basically you're just steam cleaning. See how we're just starting to steam? It's done, it's warm enough. Now we'll take it over to the sink and I'll show you how we scrub it out really quickly. This is how you care for these pans. Simply enough, I take my brush and I just go in circles and scrub it clean. All around the edges, nice and pretty. And I pour it out. Give it a rinse with warm water. Now our well seasoned pan is clean. Most importantly, dry the pan, okay? So take a paper towel and just wipe inside of it and dry it. Dry inside and outside. One of the biggest concerns with these pans is rust, okay? And the reason you don't use soap on this pan is because soap breaks apart the surface tension of the grease which is absorbed into the metal. And this is a porous surface, a porous metal surface. The reason you're seasoning the pan is because eventually you won't need a non-stick pan. This pan will have absorbed enough oil to be just like a non-stick pan. Once I've done this, I'll take a little olive oil, put it in my pan, then I'll take another paper towel and I'll oil the pan. And I'll oil all the way on the edges, all the way out on the handle. and even on the sides. So what you're gonna do with this well seasoned pan, look how shiny that is, is a lot different than what you're gonna do with a brand new pan or a pan that we're re-seasoning. We're gonna strip them down, all the coatings, all the oil, all the dirt, all the rust, and then we're gonna replace the oil that's in that pan and season it well. You wanna put your oven on the self-clean setting and you wanna put it in for about an hour. You wanna put these pots in for about an hour. We'll take all our stickers and all this stuff off of this lodge pan. And the lodge pan comes with instructions. We're gonna do it our way. Make sure you get that booger out of there, that goober. I call it goober. 
It's like a glue. Looks like a booger to me. There we go. Look at the surface here, okay? It has a coating on it, a factory coating that's on this pan to keep it from rusting in the store. I don't want to eat that. I want to burn it off. This is how we're going to burn it off. So take your pan and put it face down in the oven. Same with our pot lid, face down, like that. Same with our other pan. And same with our old pot. This is nice, nice Dutch oven. Now we're gonna close our oven and put it on the self-cleaning cycle for one hour. Be sure you do this on a warm or mild day so that you can open the doors in your house and let that burny stinky smell out. Folks, there are a thousand different ways to go about doing this. I'm gonna show you the way that worked for me, the way that keeps my cast iron pan working just perfectly, not sticking. I can cook eggs in it, I can cook anything in it, nothing sticks to it. This is the way that I did it. There's probably a thousand other different ways, but this way works. So a little known fact about cast iron cooking is when you cook in a cast iron pot or a cast iron pan, you get iron from it. Before aluminum pans like this guy and stainless steel pots and pans came out, there were much fewer cases of iron deficiency anemia. Cooking with cast iron helps build your iron up in your blood. Now let's wait on this oven to do its job. So without further ado, let's break out the pans and see what they look like. I'm gonna have a mitt on my hand just because it's still really hot in there. So let's open her up and get our original pan out. This is our brand new pan. Basically it just burnt off all of the new coating, that oily coating that's put on from the factory. We're gonna set it over here by the sink. Now here's the one with the ripples on the bottom of it. If you guys know what that's called, post me a comment down there. You can see that it's much more clean. We'll put it over here in the sink too. So in order for me to get this really dirty one, I'm gonna have to double mitt this thing. Let's get her out. Oh yeah. So inside there, hang on, I'll get you a better shot. So with some better light, you can really see that crusty, rusty nastiness has pretty much just turned into powder here, okay? So we're gonna take this, and all of the cast iron pieces and we're gonna wash them really good and we're gonna scour them okay I'll show you what we're gonna do I find this exciting I don't know I just find it exciting to take something that's old and crusty and make it beautiful and new again I just find it really exciting let's go over here to the kitchen sink and I'll show you what we're gonna do it does stink your house up so be sure you're able to open the doors and windows and let the stench out okay it just smells like old burnt metal FYI it does make your house stink you can use SOS pads which is this right here I have in my hand. I prefer getting just plain steel wool and using my own soap, but these came pre-soaped, so we'll use these. Or you can use just a standard sponge like you'd wash your dishes with, with a Scotch-Brite pad on the side of it. And there's a third option here. So you can buy an attachment that goes on your drill, and you can use this attachment to grind off. If you've got some really, really heavy residue, like in our old pan over here, we could grind that off. And if you really, really, really want to take it to the next level and you want to smooth these pans out, you can take this grinding wheel, and I'll put a link down below to all these things that we're going to use. You can take this grinding wheel and basically just grind down and polish off all these crusties that you see right here. If you were to find a nice cast iron skillet at the Goodwill and it looks just horribly gross, don't worry. You can clean them up just using one of these. And sometimes you can just clean them up using just this guy. So I want to take my Brillo pad, get them a little bit wet. We're going to take the scouring pad and we're just going to clean it really good. We want to get all the yuckies off of there, okay? You just want to clean really, really good. And you want to clean all the way along the inside edges and all the way along the handle and then flip it over. You also want to clean the bottom and the sides, okay? I take extra special care in the area that my food is going to contact. I'm going to rinse it with lukewarm water and a clean sponge. Now, you've got them all cleaned, you've got them rinsed off, you want to be sure you wipe it dry, okay, because you don't want it to flash rust. In other words, rust just like that in a flash. You want to wipe it absolutely dry. It's a process here, guys, but it's worth it to have a great cast iron pan that will last you a lifetime. This stuff gets passed on generation to generation. Now, when you feel the pan, the pan will feel differently. The pan will feel sticky almost. Your hands will want to stick to it, okay? 
the pan's going to feel different than it did before. It feels clean. It feels porous. And that's something that you need to think about. This is a porous surface and we want the entire porous surface to take oil. Let's clean the other ones. So we're basically just going to repeat this washing process. Scrub, scour, wash, clean. Spend about five minutes per pan. Scrub, 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 scrub. Get it down to the bare metal so that it will take up oil. That's the goal here. Doesn't that look beautiful? Doesn't it just look so much better? It looks so much better than it did when we started. Guys, this is that point where I say, click that like button. Click that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel. Click that like button. Let me know that you're learning something. Let me know that you're having fun with me, okay? That's what this is all about. It's about having fun. See how clean that pan is? That's nice. Why am I doing this? Why do I want to eat out of cast iron pans when I can just use a non-stick pan that has plenty of poison in it? You're going to eat out of a cast iron pan because it's good for you. Because it's a good thing. The work that you put into the cast iron pan makes you enjoy cooking. It's an adventure. Cooking is an adventure. Cooking is science. Cooking is therapy. This is therapy. Now let's get that old rotten dirty one and see what we can make it look like. Just so you guys have a basis of comparison, here is the old one and here is the new one. Get ready to watch a miracle. Just gonna go to town on it. By the way guys, this is not my uh, pot here. This is my neighbor's pot. I was doing this and I called my neighbor up and asked him if they had a pot that they needed to be re-seasoned and they said, wow, yes we do. So this is my neighbor, Tony and Bonnie. Not to be confused with Bonnie and Clyde. We're just going to scrub it clean. See that rust coming off? It's a thing of beauty. I'm going to have to roll my sleeves up on this one. Let me show you the big pot, okay? See how crusty and rusty and nasty that thing is? This thing will shine like a brand new pot. It's tedious work. It's good work. It makes you proud when you're done. Guys, I encourage you to go out and do something to make yourself proud today. I'm gonna get busy scrubbing. This old cast iron stuff is, just has a simple beauty about it. So while we're scrubbing this, we're gonna go ahead and preheat our oven to 300 degrees. And once we oil these pans back down, we're gonna stick them in the oven for about 40 minutes. Man, look inside there. Isn't that beautiful? It didn't come quite as clean as I would have liked it to, but we're still going to get it a nice treatment anyway. Now we've got our two cast iron skillets and our one cast iron pot all cleaned up. This is the point where we wipe all the water off and we grease the pan down. We'll grease it down. Now there are several different ways you can grease the pan down. The tried and true way is just get yourself some Crisco, just some solid oil. You want to stick your fingers down in here and don't be scared of it. Dip your fingers in there, get yourself a good dollop of beautiful Crisco and rub it on this pan, okay? Just rub it in nice, all right? Just like so. Let me show you. Rub it in good, rub it in nice and good, okay? Just like so. Get it nice and greasy. Use your hands. Don't be scared of it. Now, grease the back side, grease the back, grease the sides. Grease the front, grease the handle, grease every part of this pan, okay? Don't forget these little handles, and don't forget that groove right there either, okay? That groove that goes all the way around, don't forget it. Get some grease in there. It's a fabulous moisturizer. Once you're satisfied with how greasified this guy is, which I'm getting pretty satisfied, it's looking good, I'm gonna put this back in the oven, face down, just like this, for about 20 to 30 minutes. You know, I think a lot of the problem with society nowadays is people just don't want to get their hands dirty. They don't, they're not tactile anymore. They don't, they don't like the feeling of certain things on their hands. Come on guys, get your hands in the dirt. Get your hands in the soil. Get your hands in some grease, like that. Just grease them up. Be sure you hit those ridges. That's where it likes to get dry. Get in there, in those grooves. Tonight, when my wife gets home, she's going to want to eat me up because I'm going to smell just like fried chicken. Woo! Grease it up. Don't leave a dry spot on the pan. Don't be scared. That pan's absorbing that oil, absorbing that grease. Get it on the handle good. Get it all over that pan. It's a good time. Let's get some grease on the big boy here. Don't you worry. It'll soak in. 
It'll do good. Get your whole arm down in there and get busy. Love that pan. It's like a sensual pot massage. Don't be scared of that grease. Don't be afraid to get it in them grooves there either. Work it. Every surface needs to be very, very heavily coated. You see the grease, it's disappearing. It's going away, look at it. Now, we'll put this in the oven, upside down. Just like that. Last but not least, don't be scared of that grease. That grease ain't gonna hurt you, that's good stuff. If you didn't make a mess, you didn't do anything. There we go, look at that. See, it's already starting to try to rust right there. We fix that. There we go. Show that pan some love. Rub it down like a beautiful woman. Or a man, if that's what you're into. See where it's trying to it's trying to rust right there already. Let that thing soak up some grease. Now, she's ready to go in the oven. Alright, so now we've got them in the oven and we'll let them cook. Anywhere from 200 to 300 degrees. I actually turned it down a little bit. I turned it on back down to 220 and we'll just let them warm. And we want them to stay warm for 20 minutes to a half an hour to soak in and absorb that oil really slowly and that'll get your pan seasoned. You don't have to use Crisco. You can use flaxseed oil. I have some black walnut oil. I could have used that. I also have pork fat, bacon grease, any of that stuff can be used to help season this pan. Now the next few times that I cook with either one of these little pans, I'm going to cook bacon in them, okay? I'm going to cook bacon because I want them to absorb oils, okay? I'm going to cook bacon, I'm going to let that oil soak in good. When I fire up the Dutch oven, I'm going to take some of that bacon grease, I'm going to rub it in there. Before I give it back to my neighbor, I'll keep seasoning it just a little bit more and make sure that it's nice and well seasoned so the next time they want to make something, it'll be ready for them. So the lesson here is, for your first few times, cook oily foods. If you want to make fried chicken, make fried chicken. Don't make eggs. Don't make a stir fry. Make something that's oily, like bacon. Or grease up your pan really good with some Crisco and make yourself some cornbread. Now every time when you get done using your cast iron cookery, clean it just like I showed you. Do not, do not, do not scrub it hard. Don't use soap. Use a mildly abrasive, soft bristled brush and no soap. Just let the pan do the work. So without further ado, boom, we're all done. Now the final thing I'm gonna do is take a paper towel and just wipe down any of the excess oil and make sure that if I miss a spot, then I got it covered. And it looks pretty good, pretty happy, very happy. Guys, I'll post links to all these individual pans down in the description below, as well as a little scrubber and Brillo scrubbers if you want to get those two to get your own pans and get them seasoned right. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Please click that like button, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, check it out. We have a farm vlog. It's all about all the things we do on the farm. It's winter time, it's nasty, so I'm in the kitchen. I enjoy being in the kitchen. I hope you do too. Guys, come on back and see me next time here on the Stony Ridge Farm. We'll teach you a little bit of something. All right? Thanks a lot. Woo! We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Hey, Mrs. Stony Ridge. Yes? Do I smell like fried chicken? You sure do. Do you want to eat me up? Sure. Told you.